Hello, and welcome to Navigating to Success. I am your host, Jeff Carlton, Certified Focal Point Business and Executive Coach. Very excited today to be joined by Tamara Williams uh, from Tamara Williams Companies uh, Company. And uh, you might know her better from bybozemanhomes.com. Um, she's out there on the web. You're going to look it up and we'll tell you again, too. So, Tamara, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. So tell us about uh, bybozemanhomes.com and Tamara Williams Company. Pretty robust. Yes, we are small but mighty. We are a office of high producing agents. Um, I would say we produce more than most of the large offices in terms of average unit count for the office. And we have... Everybody here is very qualified. So our marketing manager has a degree in marketing. Our graphic designer has a degree in graphic design. Um, we've sourced the best tools for our team members in order to potentially be their best selves in selling real estate. Yeah, and it is a, a eight agents um, is what I saw on your website. And uh, hats off your uh, your. Uh, so you have a marketing team on staff in addition to your producers. Correct. And it shows because your website is, uh, is beautiful. It's uh, really great photography. Um, are you, are you, are you guys using your own drones to do overhead uh, pictures? Oh, you know how they say leave the, leave certain things to the professionals. We have wonderful photographers that we outsource everything to, and they handle all of those beautiful photography shots for us. So we have to do hats off to them. You know, and that's, that is a great words of wisdom there. When you're not good at something, find somebody who is, and uh, uh, it, it, it frees you up to do what you are good at and do more of that. So uh, how long ago did you start the company? I believe six or seven years ago, we started Tamara Williams and Company. So give me a the, the quick version of um, how you how you got your start. So I was at a larger brokerage um, national franchise where I adored those folks that I worked with. But um, I was looking at the marketing output that I had in my overall overhead and kind of the core values of the people that I was surrounding myself with. And everybody had different expectations. There was no streamlined process. And I really have a view that if you are selling real estate, you need to do it at the highest level possible. And if somebody's doing it less than, less than you at the same company, they're just pulling you down. So I wanted to level up who I surrounded myself with. So I opened up Tamara Williams and company. And we, um, there was just two of us at that point and some support staff and marketing. And over the years, we have grown um, in agent count and production. Sure. Um, one thing that kind of struck me, so six to seven years ago, so 2017, 2018 um, time frame. And you all of a sudden find yourself, and you're in a hot spot in Bozeman, Montana. Um, you got it. I mean, it's, it, it's there's a lot of real estate activity happening, a lot of new money and investment coming into the valley. Did the pandemic help or hurt? Um, the pandemic helped and hurt, I would say. You know, our market was really, really good before then. Really it wasn't, it was a buyer, it was a seller's market. Um, it wasn't necessarily a buyer's market. COVID took our market on steroids. So you could probably look at a 30 to 50% appreciation during the COVID market. We haven't gone back down in pricing. So we're still at those high COVID numbers, maybe not peak market, but we're still up there. And the people coming in are maybe came here because of COVID or because of TV shows that were watched during COVID. So, 
I, I wasn't going to bring that one up, but you did it. So, so it's out. We can't unring the bell. It's out there. No. Yeah, no, I, I see it. And, and I have seen that as well. My, I have a daughter that lives in Bozeman. And uh, I, if I could go back in time and would have bought one of those little houses in 2018. You would have been sitting pretty. Um, I would have been, I would have. I would have been happier <laughs> but it's not all about money we'll we'll get to some of that stuff that is not all about money so let's talk more about the expansion and uh something that we had touched on earlier um about the kind of people and why you hire who you hire yeah when we are looking at hiring a brand new agent we ask them about their goals um, and we also let them know about our company, our company culture. So one thing that we look for are people that might want to be full-time realtors. They don't have to be a full-time realtor right off the bat, but we want people that want to take this as a serious career and need to work that way. The other piece of it is they need to want to do everything at a high level. So we expect our agents to have a lot of extra forms signed um, that is way above and beyond state guidelines because we want to try and keep people out of trouble and we want to try and help our clients at a high level. We expect our client, our agents to use professional photos. We actually won't sign off on a listing if somebody's not representing the company and following branding. Um, we're pretty strict on all of that just because we feel like sellers spend a lot of money and buyers are making a huge investment. So we want people to be taken care of at the highest level possible. Yeah, no, in in you'd said something earlier um, off camera, uh, so to speak, um, about hiring people that want to be their best selves, and uh, it brought up the uh, the concept of setting an intentional culture versus an mm -hmm. ac accidental culture. So you've uh, you've driven a very intentional, positive culture. Um, this seems to be uh, paying off for you very well. Um, what balance of running the company versus working for the company do you feel like you have? Yeah, in terms of running the company, I think I'm at about 75% versus working in the company. I'm blessed with an amazing assistant who's able to handle a lot of details. Um, and when I'm running the company, we're looking at increase, increasing efficiencies, adding agent um, tools to help their lives be more successful so that they can make more money. So we really look at processes and improvements every single day. It's not like a one day thing for us. It's something that we focus on. Um, that's kind of how we operate. And and that's it's pretty striking because it's almost the 180 degrees out from the answer I get from other business owners where they are the business. The business is contingent on their ability to do their use their hands and be in it. So the fact that you're spending three quarters of your time running your business instead of running within your business is uh quite respectable and uh it, it's the exception not the norm so uh hats off to you for for that um we talked about using the best tools and um and the reason you left your previous firms uh, uh, firm and started your own and you went out and and you, you mentioned it with when i asked the question about the drone um the innovative technologies innovative things that you bring into it tougher to come up with the concepts find the concepts or implement them um i think implement them i'm very tech driven so something that is easy for me but i don't like to follow up on things because i'm big picture so um i like metrics so a lot of the tech that we have is metric driven and it's just making it so that it's as easy as possible for my team, because if they don't enjoy it as well, it's, it's counterintuitive. So we've put things in place so that people know 
if they're spending their time wisely and they can track where their income is coming from and um, making people want to use product is not always the easiest thing based upon their technology background. Uh, yeah, you can't tell you can't teach a client to fill out a PDF sometimes. I I totally get that. I I've had that experience. Um, metrics that that's a a thread to pull there. How important are those? Do you do you refer to them as KPIs and KRIs? I don't. The performance I know indicators. that's what the sheet tells me that I look at. <laughs> um, but. You know, when I sit there and I look at something, I can say, oh, wow, this agent calls 300 people and they're doing six more deals and this other person that's calling 200 people. Um, and so I like to go back and look at that A to see how we are historically and everybody else in the office. And I think if people are having a bad time and they're not selling and they're down on themselves, if they go back and they look at those metrics, it's a pretty easy conversation to have of why don't we just focus on this today? And I think things will turn around. Yeah, no, that's great. And that's a, that's a good uh, holistic example or even specific example of, cause I talk to uh, clients that I work with sometimes and they can't spell KPI when I tell it to them and for everybody watching it's key performance indicator and KRIs or KRAs or key result areas, key result indicators are usually financial. You all have one called a profit and loss statement. That is a key result indicator right there. It's your, is your profit and loss. So um, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's great that you implemented that because it's such a fluid industry in real estate. It would be really easy to lose that and uh, not track that time and not track those phone calls. So the fact that you're doing that is is very innovative. It's very cool. Thank you. Um, so we talked about um, how you built it and, and why you built it and what setting intentional culture versus um, accidental culture where are you going? What's what's next? What's your strategic plan for the next 12 to 36 months? Yeah, so I want to increase agent units in terms of their overall production. If they're happy, I'm happy. Um, and, you know, I'd like to see everybody in my office if we're talking about cold, hard numbers. Um, if my new agents can do six deals this year, I'll be happy. If my um, seasoned agents can do 20 to 25 deals this year. I will be ecstatic. And I think when we're talking about like the future growth, we want to add team members. We want to make sure that we're adding the right team members that want to grow with our culture. And maybe they're not all situated here in Bozeman because I think that it's hard to compete regularly with your peers, um, especially when there's only so many units to be sold. But I like the thought of growing outward um, adding in other markets like Big Sky, Livingston, Helena, and our surrounding communities, in addition to Bozeman. I mean, we're not opposed to adding great team members. However, I found that finding our culture is not always the easiest thing. So, um, so one, you're hiring. What specific positions? A real estate agent. Okay, so looking for real estate agents, and more importantly, you're looking for real estate agents, not necessarily in the Gallatin Valley. You're looking to expand um, within the valley, but also without geographically. You got it. Gonna are looking at uh, opening satellite offices in different communities. Yeah, I would call it that. Um, we would we would open up other offices if we can get enough body count up there and add additional support staff. But for now it'll be the remote satellite offices and they can zoom in or come here to Bozeman. Yeah. That's uh that was maybe one good thing that happened out of the pandemic is we changed our workplace. It pros and cons to that. I will say there's yeah. something that gets lost in the uh, person to person contact sometimes. So um, we encourage all of our brand new agents to come to the office and then we actually set up a 
online Zoom um, all day long, every day, so that people can log in and out to get help and they can hang out all day if they need anything. Um, oh, cool. So it kind of reduces the friction of telephone and not being able to see. Yeah, no, uh, uh, that's another example of the kind of innovation that you're bringing to the, to the game. All right. The last question then, what uh, is a, uh, is somebody that got bit by this, the entrepreneurial bug and, and had the spark to do it better and do it different, do it your way. What advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur or a, a new struggling business owner? Yeah. Don't be afraid to reinvest in your business. You have to pay to play. You might have to scale down your life while you're on the upward scale of your business. Um, and then to save for a rainy day, you don't have to necessarily increase the outward view of how your life looks to others when you're making more money. Um, you can use that money for other greater things in the future. The save for a rainy day is a huge piece of advice because recessions come and go, interest rates come and go, markets uh, get cold. Although I don't see that happening to you in the near, near term, <laughs> there are other parts of Montana where the market's kind of cooling off. And quite frankly, the supply is not there to meet the demand. Mm -hmm. And so everybody wanted to become a realtor in 2020 coming out of the pandemic. And now they're all starving because there's nothing to sell. Um, so saving for a rainy day is incredibly good advice. And um, you don't need to buy a Mercedes necessarily. Get yourself something that's going to last, right? Mm -hmm. Although a Mercedes would be nice. but Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to reward yourself. That's another, yeah. uh, that's another freebie. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me, Tamara. Thank you, Jeff. And for everybody watching, I look forward to seeing you on the uh, next episode of Navigating Success. Check out uh, Tamara and her colleagues at buybozemanhomes.com. Um, all their contact info is there. And uh, if you're in that market or if you're not in that market and you're in outlying areas of Montana and you're interested in working, with a company that has a, a really neat culture. Uh, look them up there too. Um, I think it sounds like they'd be happy to have you. So everybody until next time, take care. Thank you.